Jamie Coots, a snake-handling Kentucky pastor who appeared on the National Geographic television reality show, called the snake salvation, died Saturday after being bitten by a snake. Coots was handling a rattlesnake during a Saturday night service at his full gospel tabernacle in Jesus' Name Church in Middlesbrough when he was bitten. The church was not too alarmed, because it happens regularly, he's going to pray for a while and he's going to get better they said. That's what happened every other time. Except this time was just so quick and it was crazy, it was really crazy. When an ambulance arrived at the church at 8.30 p.m., paramedics were told Coots had gone home, the Middlesbrough Police Department said in a news release. Contacted at his house, Coots refused medical treatment. Emergency workers left about 9.10 p.m. When they returned about an hour later, Coots was dead from the venomous snake bite. Before he passed, on January 2013, Coots was caught transporting three rattlesnakes and two copperheads through Knoxville. Tennessee wildlife officials confiscated the snakes, and Coots pleaded guilty to illegal wildlife possession. He was given one year of unsupervised probation. Coots said then he needed the snakes for religious reasons, citing a Bible passage in the book of Mark that reads, in part, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. After he was bitten Saturday night, Coots dropped the snakes, but then picked them back up and continued on. Within minutes, his son, Cody, told the television station his dad had been bitten eight times before, but never had such a severe reaction. Cody Coots said he thought the bite would be just like all the others, but this time was different. What do we call this? Should we call it faith or madness? Because none of this is biblical. God never told us to play with snakes or any other animals. It is written in the Holy Bible that God has given us the authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. So therefore nothing shall harm us. But he never said play with snakes or any animal. Oftentimes the Bible is taken out of context or most times people change the words in the Bible to fit or suit their own beliefs and doctrines. But one thing is clear this is not biblical, and this is not the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Coots' story is not merely a sensationalized headline, but a human tragedy and a cautionary tale. This essay delves into the life and death of Jamie Coots, exploring the roots of snake handling within Pentecostalism and the potential pitfalls of interpreting scripture through a lens of personal desire. To understand Jamie Coots and his beliefs, one must first understand the religious landscape from which he emerged. Pentecostalism, a branch of Protestant Christianity, arose in the early 20th century, emphasizing the work of the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts such as divine healing, speaking in tongues and prophecy. Within Pentecostalism, a subset known as the Holiness Movement, further stressed outward signs of inward holiness. This pursuit of holiness, coupled with a literal interpretation of certain biblical passages, led to the emergence of snake handling in the early 1900s. Proponents pointed to verses in the Gospel of Mark, specifically Mark 16, 17, 18, as evidence that handling serpents was a sign of true faith. This literal interpretation, however, ignored the historical and contextual nuances of the scripture. The practice of snake handling, while seemingly extreme, holds a certain allure for some. It represents a tangible, visceral expression of faith, a willingness to put one's life on the line for their beliefs. For those who embrace this practice, the act of handling a venomous creature and emerging unscathed is seen as a testament to God's power and protection. However, this interpretation overlooks the broader context of the Bible's teachings on wisdom, discernment, and the sanctity of life. It disregards the countless verses that speak to God's desire for us to live in harmony with creation, not to tempt fate or court danger. The Bible emphasizes the importance of using our God-given intellect and seeking wisdom in all things. To interpret isolated verses without considering the full counsel of Scripture is to risk misrepresenting God's heart and distorting His message. Jamie Coots grew up immersed in the world of serpent handling. His father and grandfather were both practitioners and the full gospel tabernacle in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, 
The church he would later pastor was known for its embrace of this controversial practice. For Coots, snake handling wasn't merely a religious ritual, it was an integral part of his identity, a deeply held conviction passed down through generations. He believed wholeheartedly that God would protect him from harm as long as his faith remained strong. Coots's dedication to his beliefs was unwavering, even in the face of criticism and legal challenges. As pastor of the Full Gospel Tabernacle, Coots became a prominent figure in the world of serpent handling. He was featured in documentaries and news reports, his church drawing visitors and skeptics alike curious to witness this unusual and controversial practice. The evening of February 15, 2014 began like many others at the Full Gospel Tabernacle. The small church was filled with the faithful, drawn together by their shared beliefs and the anticipation of experiencing God's presence in a tangible way. As the service reached its climax, Pastor Jamie Coots, a commanding presence with his long beard and piercing gaze, retrieved a wooden box from behind the pulpit. Inside, coiled and ready to strike, was a timber rattlesnake its scales shimmering under the dim lights. Coots, a seasoned serpent handler, had performed this ritual countless times before, his confidence stemming from a lifetime of believing in God's protection. He lifted the snake from its box, its sinuous body coiling around his arms as he preached with fervor. Then, in a heartbeat, tragedy struck as the rattlesnake sank its fangs into Coots's hand. The snake bite, delivered with the swift precision of a creature designed to kill, sent shockwaves through the small community of Middlesbrough and beyond. Coots, refusing medical treatment, opted to place his faith in God's healing power, a decision that would prove fatal. As hours turned into an agonizing night, Coots's condition deteriorated rapidly. The venom coursing through his veins began to shut down his organs. By morning, Jamie Coots, the pastor who had stared death in the face countless times, had breathed his last. Coots's death ignited a firestorm of controversy, reigniting the debate over the legitimacy and safety of snake handling. Supporters argued that Coots's death was not an indictment of snake handling, but rather a testament to the unpredictable nature of faith. The tragic death of Jamie Coote serves as a stark reminder of the dangers inherent in misinterpreting religious texts. While the Bible undeniably speaks to the power of faith and the possibility of miracles, it also emphasizes the importance of wisdom, discernment and respect for the sanctity of life. To selectively extract verses that seemingly endorse dangerous practices while ignoring the broader context of scripture is to engage in a dangerous form of spiritual cherry-picking. The Bible in its entirety paints a picture of a God who desires relationship, not reckless abandon. To use isolated verses as justification for practices that endanger lives is to disregard the heart of God's message, a message rooted in love, compassion, and a desire for his children to live lives filled with purpose and meaning. The allure of personal interpretation lies in its ability to offer a sense of control and certainty in a world often shrouded in ambiguity. It allows individuals to craft a belief system that resonates with their own experiences and desires, even if those beliefs deviate from the established teachings of their faith. However, this approach to scripture is fraught with danger. It opens the door to subjectivity where individual preferences and interpretations hold more weight than the intended meaning of the text. This can lead to a fragmentation of belief where individuals or groups within a religion hold vastly different and often contradictory interpretations of the same sacred text. It can also foster division and conflict as groups with differing interpretations clash over whose understanding is more accurate or authoritative. Furthermore, personal interpretation, unchecked by sound hermeneutical principles and guided by qualified spiritual leaders, can lead to the justification of harmful or even dangerous practices. The true gospel at its core is a message of hope, love and redemption. It speaks to the transformative power of God's grace freely offered to all who believe and the promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in the context of the true gospel is not blind adherence to a set of rules or the performance of rituals, no matter how extreme or seemingly devout. It is a deep-seated trust in God's character, his promises and his plan for humanity. Love 
The cornerstone of the Christian faith is not merely a sentiment or an emotion, but an active self-sacrificing commitment to the well-being of others. Obedience, often misconstrued as blind submission, is in its truest form an act of love and trust. It is a recognition that God, in his infinite wisdom and love, knows what is best for us, even when his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The tragic death of Jamie Coots serves as a sobering reminder of the importance of seeking God's will over our own. While Coots's unwavering belief in the power of God is commendable, his decision to engage in a practice that ultimately cost him his life highlights the dangers of interpreting scripture through a lens of personal desire. As we navigate the complexities of faith and the often conflicting interpretations of religious texts, let us remember that our ultimate goal should be to know God more deeply and to live lives that reflect his character. Let us always remember that true faith is not about testing God's boundaries, but about trusting in his goodness, resting in his love and living in obedience to his word. Stay safe out there, folks, and please don't forget to subscribe.